Back for Blood might be the only game that got delayed, but still came out this year. So I guess it's got that going for it. Despite the fact we've been oversaturated with a million and one zombie games, there still doesn't seem to be that many worth playing. It's been 11 years since Left 4 Dead 2 released, and in that time, the only title that attempted to fill the void was the World War Z game. If you've seen our video on that, you'll know that we surprisingly adore it. So for me, Back for Blood didn't have to hold up against Left 4 Dead. In my head, it was fighting for supremacy over World War Z. So is it better or worse? Um, kind of depends on what you're after, really. Let's break it down, starting with the gameplay. While World War Z opted for a third-person approach, until the Aftermath DLC, that is, Back for Blood keeps in line with its Alpha D predecessors and puts you right up against the onslaught with a first-person perspective. And while I appreciate the immersion that comes with staring the undead hordes dead in the face, being so up close and personal really highlights how simplistic and repetitive the individual zombie design can be. I'm not saying the game should have been third-person, but if you're going to showcase the main enemies so closely, you may want to work on the detail a little more. On the other, more positive hand, the gunplay in Back for Blood is pretty good shit. All the guns feel appropriately weighty, and the melee weapons are incredibly fine. I love the way the characters hold their guns sideways while crouching. Little details like that make this game feel fresh, despite the formula fundamentally being the same. While I'm ready to complain, let's talk about the cards and decks. I don't get why they're here. Including unlockables and upgrades, I understand, but this whole card system feels like it's in the wrong game. The basic gist is that you use supplies from completing levels to unlock cards from a skill tree. Then you can assign those cards to a deck and choose one card to keep before each level you play. The cards reset once you've finished your run, none of the cards massively change the gameplay, and more than half of them are useless. I'm not sure what was wrong with dedicated upgrade trees for each weapon and character. You know, something that would actually encourage you to try new guns or play as different characters. But I guess Turtle Rock decided that what Left 4 Dead was missing was more faff. Some of you might have clocked that I neglected to mention any of the special infected. Firstly, well done. And secondly, it's because I don't give a shit about them. The special infected in Left 4 Dead and World War Z are so much better at changing how you play as a group. The more interesting special infected in this are basically just a suicide bomber and a tall guy with a really big arm. This is the one department where Turtle Rock really shit the bed. That and with the AI and aim assist, which are both more bother than they are worth. I feel like I spent more time battling the aim assist than I did shooting zombies. So much of this game just feels so user unfriendly. Like when I was playing with a friend, they died and the game let them swap into a bot character. Great, perfect, amazing. Once we found that old character and rescued them, it forced my friend immediately back into that character, at which point they proceeded to walk straight off a bridge. Oh, what else is the? I guess the swarm mode? It's kind of boring and messy. That's all I have to say about the swarm mode. Beyond all that though, it's worth mentioning that the game runs pretty smoothly most of the time. There's a few bugs and glitches, but nothing overly stupid. Speaking of stupid then, the cinematics are really cool and well done, but I just don't fucking care, man. I came to play a game, not watch an animated Left 4 Dead film. And you might say, fine, don't watch them then, which is fair. But when you're in an online lobby, you have to wait for everyone to finish watching them before you can start. And they're so goddamn long. They make the intro to Left 4 Dead look short by comparison. Weep my ass. It was really difficult to come to a conclusion for this review because Back for Blood isn't a bad game by any stretch but it's also not really worth getting hyped about either. 
At its best, it's fairly decent. And at its worst, it's shit. If you love Left 4 Dead, or even the World War Z game, it's an easy sell, since it's really just another Left 4 Dead game with some silly extras. And you probably already have it. If you like those games though, but feel that £50 minimum is a bit much right now for what is essentially more of the same, then Back 4 Blood is not going to surprise you. And if you hate those games, then you're really going to hate this one. Why are you even watching this? <laughs> Also, why are birds not bothered by machine gun fire, but freak the fuck out if you walk slightly near them? That's that's weird, right? That's that's not just me. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Were you excited for Back for Blood? Were you disappointed by it? Does it live up to the expectations? Do you prefer Left 4 Dead? Do you prefer World War Z like we do? Uh, any and all of that, feel free to share it in the comments. If you did want to leave a like or even subscribe, that would mean the world to us. And if you did have anything spare to give, you can support us on Patreon. Thank you so much. Cheers.